how about a car part? 3D printing car parts, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. As I mentioned in a few of my last videos, I got stuck down in Denver during a massive snowstorm on one of my trips. And it got down to negative five degrees of wind chill, frozen roads and everything. Now, this van wasn't really, it, it hasn't spent much of its life out of the warmth and comfort of California, Washington and whatnot. And when it did, it was during nice times of the year. So understandably, it had windshield wiper fluid that was only rated for freezing, not well below freezing into the negatives. So it froze and this caused several issues. Obviously I couldn't use my windshield wipers, but it also broke this cap and when it did end up thawing, it ended up sloshing about and making a bit of a mess. So I didn't want to pay the Mercedes premium of $45. The part was only $5, but they wanted $40 to install it and they wouldn't just sell the part. I did find a suitable compatible replacement on Amazon for about five bucks as well, which wouldn't have been too bad, but I didn't want to wait for shipping and I don't always have an address I can mail things to right now. So I thought, let's 3D print something because while windshield wiper fluid is a chemical, it's relatively chemically inert. It doesn't have a lot of chemicals that could make plastic brittle. And if I used a material which was rated for cold temperatures and whatnot, so PLA's out, it's way too brittle. Uh, ABS would work, it has good chemical resistance, but I ended up going with PETG. I figured it would last a fairly long time and snap on and off with no real issues. And if it did break again, I now have the design and all I've got to do is print another one. Now this isn't gonna exactly be a tutorial, it's gonna be more of a walkthrough of my workflow for how I go from design or even just the con concept of something through to how I 3D print it and ultimately build it. So we're not gonna get into the nitty gritty and show you how I use the various softwares I use. Uh, if you wanna see stuff along those lines, be sure to leave a comment down below telling me that you want like a full series on how to do a CAD project. However, this was a fairly simple part. So I wanted to try something different. Normally I use a software called Fusion 360 to do my CAD. And it's a free to students and educational personal use software that has the capability of much more complex software. However, for most people, this complexity isn't needed or even wanted. And it also really only runs on Windows and Mac devices. Lately, I've been using my phone as a desktop computer of sorts to replace my laptop to save power in the van. And I wanted a CAD program that could run on it. Well, there isn't really much on Android that can do CAD. However, there's Onshape, a browser-based CAD program. So I thought, okay, this is a good opportunity, a simple design that I can use to start learning on shape. And so that's what I ended up using. It turned out pretty well. It did take a couple of tries as obviously this one broke as I was trying to uh, pull it off. This one didn't even fit. And the one I currently have on there, third time's the charm, I got it. Now that's an important detail, plastic shrinks, especially when you're going from the temperatures of it being extruded out of a 3D printer to it cooling down and being in your hand. So you have to design in a certain level of tolerance to account for that shrinking, especially if you're interfacing with an item that's made of a different material or that already exists. So you want to make something to fit onto something like I was trying to get this windshield wiper cap to fit on the windshield wiper fluid bottle. Now with that in mind, I took some measurements and I measured up the hole. I measured up the lip that it's got a snap over. I looked at what I could of the original part in order to find how that lip should be shaped to, well, if they designed it that way, then I should design it that way too. Ultimately, I rounded the lip out a little bit more because it would fit on and off easier and put less strain on the part without having the risk of popping off. I also noticed they added a little vent hole to the middle, so I added that as well.
once the design was done enough to at least get a test print, I threw it into Kira. And that is a slicing software. It takes the files from Fusion 360 or on shape or any STL file that you designed and makes that into a language called G code that the 3D printer understands. It's basically like taking a bunch of pieces of paper and drawing the individual layers of something and stacking them together to build that item. That's exactly what the 3D printer does, but it needs the code, the G code in order to do that. So once you've sliced it with uh, the various settings that are conducive to your design, in this case, I didn't have any overhangs and I'm using PETG filament. So I didn't need support material. I knew it was gonna be a little bit stringy just because that's the nature of the PETG filament. So I generated the G code, threw it on the 3D printer and I waited uh, about 30 minutes. This didn't take too long to print. So I pulled it off the printer Went outside, tested it, it didn't fit. It actually crumbled in my hand. And like I said, that's just simply because it shrank and it was too tight and it took too much force. So I expanded the next one a little bit just to account for that shrinkage. And the next one I expanded a little bit more and hey, I got one that fits. And it really is as simple as that, especially if you're using an off the shelf 3D printer like the Monoprice Select Mini V2 I use. Now I've owned a lot of 3D printers in the past. I've built a Prusa Mini i2. I've owned a pair of Monoprice Ultimate V1s. I traded one of those Monoprice Ultimate V1s for a V2. Ultimately, I went down to this little printer because it does 99% of what I need perfectly fine, and I can make it run on USB-C or off-grid power or anything. Be sure to check out that video right here where I modified the 3D printer to run on USB-C. It's a very efficient printer and it works great in a small space like this. And that's really all there is to it. It's not that hard to design something like this. All it is is a few circles of the right measurements and a fillet joint, a fillet, fillet, fillet. Give me that fillet of fish. And you print it out and you snap it on and boom, you just repaired your car with no reliance on anyone else. You've got filament, you've got a printer, you've got some CAD programs. You can make what you need to make. And that's the beautiful thing about 3D printing. It doesn't require anyone else's permission to do once you know how to do it. And that's about it. This is just another way I'm self-sufficient on the road and make the repairs that I need to make and do the things I need to do in order to maintain this lifestyle. Yeah, I could have spent five bucks and it would have saved me some time on getting this cap, but I would have had to find a place to ship it to. And I would have had to also, well, pay for it. I used about 12 cents of filament, even counting the failed prints in order to make this. So that's pretty good in my book. Anyway, this was just a really quick, simple walkthrough on how you go from the concept, identifying a need to producing that part in a way that you can do yourself. If you want to see a more in-depth example of this and maybe like I'll uh, do a walkthrough on how to design and 3D print a drone frame or something of the sort, be sure to let me know down below and I can actually do a full several video tutorial on this concept. I've been Glitch, this has been Hack5, Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.